Okay, here we're going to solve the three trig equations. Uh, we've got 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, 3 times cotangent squared x equals 1, and 2 times sine squared x equals 1. So for number 79, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by adding 1 to both sides, and then just divide both sides by 2. So I'm trying to determine where cosine x equals 1 half. Well, again, this is where you know knowing the unit circle is helpful. So at the angle pi over 3, that angle hits the unit circle at the point 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So again, cosine represents the x coordinate. So our solution will be at pi over 3. And there's going to be another solution down here in the fourth quadrant, because again, the x coordinate there would be positive 1 half. If we go all the way around, we've gone 6, uh, six pi over 3, or again, 2 pi. But if we backtrack pi over 3, that'll give us our second solution of 5 pi over 3. So we've got the two solutions, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So number 80, I'm going to start off, we've got 3 cotangent squared x equals 1. I'm just going to start off by dividing both sides by 3. Well, if we take the square root, we'll get cotangent of x equals positive negative square root of one-third. And we can simplify that by taking the square root of the numerator, which would just be 1. The square root of the denominator, well, that's just the square root of 3. Of course, you could rationalize the denominator, but um, I'm not going to. So cotangent, so let's see, tangent sine over cosine. So cotangent's going to be cosine over sine. So I'm thinking, on the unit circle, where is the ratio of the x-coordinate to the y-coordinate going to be equal to 1 over root 3? And notice pi over 3 still does that, because at pi over 3, cosine x would be 1 half. Um, sine of pi over 3 would be root 3 over 2. And of course, you can flip and multiply. But we'll be left with positive 1 over root 3. So. At pi over 3, we'll get one of our solutions. Likewise, at 5 pi over 3, that'll be another solution, because again, that's where cotangent of, cotangent of 5 pi over 3 will again give us positive 1 over root 3. But we can also have negative solutions. So if we take this angle and reflect it about the y-axis, that's going to correspond to the angle 2 pi over 3. And then likewise, down here in the third quadrant, Okay, so if we go halfway around the unit circle, that's pi units. If we go another pi over 3 units, well, 1 pi plus a third pi will give us the other solution of 4 pi over 3. So four solutions there. Last but not least, we have 2 sine squared x equals 1. Again, we can divide both sides by 2. Take the square root of both sides. We'll get sine x equals positive negative square root of 1 over 2. And again, we can take the square root of the numerator, which is just 1. The square root of the denominator, well, that's just square root of 2. And I'm going to rationalize the denominator here. If we multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 2, we'll be left with square root of 2 over 2. And recall at the angle pi over 4, on the unit circle, that's where both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate equal square root of 2 over 2. So again, we're thinking about the y-coordinate in this case, but, you know, obviously they're, they're both root 2 over 2. But again, a sine represents the y-coordinate. So one solution will be pi over 4. The other positive solution would be down here in the fourth quadrant. But likewise, to get negative solutions, we can be in the second quadrant or the third quadrant. So that's pi over 4. Uh, this angle will correspond to 3 pi over 4. In the third quadrant, we have 5 pi over 4. And in the fourth quadrant, we'll get our last solution of 7 pi over 4. And we've now got our four solutions.